All right, throughout the course of this video, we're going to be looking at what is called the rain shadow effect. It's also known as orographic uplift, or if you want to use non sciencey terms, you can just say the west or the windward side of a mountain range often has more rain and more plants than the eastern side. So let's just look at why that is. And what we're going to do is just start off with a parcel of air, also known as just like a little little bubble of air and air mass at the bottom of this mountain range and we are going to say that this is some warm air and what's going to happen to this warm air is that as it's pushed up this mountain and you know that it is going to be pushed up this mountain because typically the prevailing wind is from west to east and it's not like this wind can just go through the mountain so what's going to happen as this wind pushes this air parcel up this air is going to expand now the reason it's going to expand is because the pressure as you get higher up in the atmosphere is less. Or in other words, there's less air particles squeezing that air parcel together. So as it rises up, it's able to expand. And then eventually it just keeps rising up this mountain range and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it is actually cold air. Now the reason it gets colder is because as those air particles in this parcel get farther apart, they bump into each other less. And if that doesn't make sense why that would make it colder, just think about if you're in a room with a bunch of people. If you have a hundred people in a room just a little bit bigger than a closet, that's like our air parcel at the very bottom of this mountain range where everyone is very tightly packed and bumping up against each other. And it's very warm. It might be a fun party, but it's very warm, probably pretty hot in there. You might even be sweating. As we go up this mountain range and this air parcel expands, that's like if you were to take those 100 people and then put them in a gymnasium. So they're not really bumping into each other at all. They're actually not really generating any heat. And then it gets much, much colder. So what's going to happen as this air parcel goes up this mountain range, another way to look at it is that as it goes from warm to colder, that cold air isn't going to be able to hold as much water vapor as the warm air was. And eventually you're going to hit a point where you start to actually condense that water vapor out of the air parcel. And what's going to happen here is you're going to form some clouds on what is called the windward side of the mountain range. So we'll label this windward. So that's because it's the side of the mountain range closest to the wind. So that's the air parcel moving up the left side of the mountain, creates those clouds, and then in some cases, it can even create some of this rain that's going to be falling down on this side of the mountain range. All right, so some of that water falls out of this cloud. And then what's going to happen to this air parcel on the other side? So first, we're going to have that big air parcel right here. And now the winds are going to be pushing it down the back side of the mountain range. So it's cold up here, but now it's not cold and moist. It's somewhat cold and dry because a lot of that water has already been squeezed out on the other side of the mountain. Then it's going to come down it's going to get a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna to change to our hot color here. By the time it gets to the bottom right here, it is condensed again. So that's like if you were to take the 100 people in the gymnasium at the top of this mountain, very, very cold, not a very fun party. And then as they're going down the mountainside, you're squeezing them back into that closet sized room. All that body heat's being generated or all those air particles are bouncing against each other and it's going to be very warm and dry. So you might understand why it's warm, but now you might be wondering why it's dry. So the reason it's dry is because, well, simple enough, we squeezed out all the water on the other side. You can almost think of this as a sponge. That sponge was rising up the left side of the mountain and then we squeezed out the water. And then as the sponge goes down the right side of the mountain, it's just dry. So what's going to happen here is this dry air, warm, dry air 
is just usually going to lead to almost like a desert on the eastern side of this mountain range. And we are going to call this the leeward side. So now we can actually think about the effect this is going to have on some of the vegetation in this area. So on the side where we get all the rain, that's where we're going to put in some nice grasses here because that's where we're picking up the majority of our rainfall. This would be like Santa Cruz or the western side of Washington or Oregon. Now, and actually, you know, just for fun, I have some time here. We are going to put in some little trees as well because you'll notice this. If you're looking at mountain ranges, you can actually see it on Google Earth as well. Where if you look at mountain ranges on Google Earth, a lot of the time, you'll actually be able to see the west side of mountains will be on very green. And then the east side of mountains, that's often where you have like a desert. So we've got our trees and our grasses on the left side. Now what is going to be on the right side? Now on this right side, we're going to take out a nice little deserty color. And we are going to fill this in like it is a desert. And just for fun, we're going to put a little snow at the top of this mountain. And what kind of plants would you expect on the leeward side? Now using some of our vocab we just learned, you would probably expect some cacti. Excuse my drawing. Don't have the best drawing skills. All right, so that basically just sums up the rain shadow effect. This is also called orographic uplift. Again, what happens is that air rises up the windward side of the mountain range. It expands, it cools. That cold air can't hold as much water vapor. It squeezes that water vapor out like a sponge. That rain falls. And then as that air parcel descends the other side, it condenses, it warms up. And then there's no more water vapor in that. It's not going to be creating any clouds. So that's why you have oftentimes a lot of rain on the windward side and sometimes even a desert on the leeward side. So I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.